Good evening, Blue Jay Nation. This is Mark Clapper, class of 1996 and executive director of college engagement at E-Town. And I am so excited to be hosting this E-Town alumni concert series event this evening. And we have a, we have a great show for you this evening, a great uh, treat, musical treat, I should say. Um, and uh, couldn't be more excited to be featuring uh, fellow Blue Jay and my friend Derek Shanley, class of 2010. Derek and I go way back to when he was a student at E-Town, and I had uh, a very special connection with a group that was uh, a really important part of, of Derek's life. Uh, it, there he is. Derek, welcome aboard. I was just giving a little introduction for you. Derek, you are, um, it, it's such a treat to have you um, this evening and to be featuring you. And you are an accounting major. Correct. At, you were an accounting major at E-Town and you um, have had a career professionally as an IT analyst uh, with Tower Health, Correct. which is fantastic. But, but you know, more, more connected to tonight, you have remained active in writing and producing original music throughout your time at E-Town to present, which is really cool. And we're gonna get a, a, a really good snapshot of that this evening. We're gonna kind of walk through your pathway a little bit, which is awesome. So, yeah, so we'll, we'll talk about, uh, I'll play a little bit and we'll talk a little about the, uh, my history as far as how he started out, where it's going and a little bit in between as well. Absolutely, yes. And in addition to being an IT professional, an IT extraordinaire, um, and a music aficionado, and um, a really creative uh, mind with music and, and just beautiful music, you are also a proud husband to Sarah and a proud father to Lucas. Correct. So um, I would be remiss if I didn't share that. Um, you know, they're really special people. Uh, and I, I absolutely love the fact that, that um, I get to kind of follow along your lives a little bit. So very, very cool. But before we get too much into your story, let's get started with some music. So would you kick us off with, with uh, some of your tunes? Sure. I will kick, you, kick this off with um, a cover that I did off of my uh, New Horizons album a handful of years ago called Porch Light. And I will um, conclude that section with a song called Reborn. Fantastic. Take it away.
Absolutely beautiful. Thanks, Mark. Fantastic. Wow. So you and I had had talked before this event and we shared some notes and things like that. And, you know, that it astounds me that that's such a beautiful song that was written 15 years ago. Yeah. Right. I mean, so that would have been that would have been 15 years ago. So and, and you had indicated you had shared that that was a song one of the songs that really kind of lit your fire for music. So tell us a little bit about that. Sure. So let's backtrack even a little bit before then. Okay. First. Um, my senior year in high school, I graduated from Governor Mifflin High School in Berks mm -hmm. County. And every single senior had to do a graduation project, which is pretty normal for uh, public schools in the United States. So I was really struggling at the time, uh, junior year actually, struggling at the time, what am I gonna do my, my senior year? Um, and my advisor at the time, his name was uh, Mr. Gasser, he still actually works at Governor Mifflin High School or middle school. And he said, you're so musically talented, why don't you write a song or something for your church? And I thought, I, know, I didn't even think of that. So. I, I wrote I wrote a song there and that kind of started everything. So when I um, went to Elizabethtown College and got accepted there, my my roommate actually my freshman year was Darren Freeholfer. And I know he was on this before. And he was, we featured him, yeah. The small world. So Darren and I were roommates uh, freshman year in uh, uh, E-Town. And it was fantastic because I didn't know many people then in the school did a fantastic job. You filled a, a paper out and they pretty much matched you up with, with someone that was very similar in your beliefs or what you want to do and so forth. So the, our similarity was, was music. So we would jam in, in our dorm room uh, in the evenings all the time. He, he brought over a little keyboard that I jammed on while he played guitar. And um, that's what started everything. So so with with me doing my graduation project and and actually Darren had a little influence too, I will say, I, I started to go over to Zug Memorial Hall in the evenings on weekends once in a while before they locked everything down at night. And I was over there and I was one of the few people over there in the evenings that I was not a music major. And sure, a, lot of music yeah. major, a lot of music majors were looking at me like, who's this guy that keeps showing up here? <laughs> so I started to write, I started to write a song and that song was actually the one I just, one I just performed for you and it has stuck with me for all those years. And it's still one of my favorite songs to perform. Oh, I can see why it's absolutely beautiful. And I love the name reborn. I mean, for, for something that, that was kind of at a time in your life when you were kind of coming into a new version of yourself so to speak in college yep. you're learning about all kinds of things about yourself and and the world w what a better name than reborn that's fantastic yeah it, i mean it, it, you can take it multiple ways um one of the ways i i took reborn was that you know you're starting off college you're starting off mm -hmm. with a new chapter in your life and you're becoming that special person that you you're educated for service. Absolutely. So you're going out yeah. in the world and, and you're doing what uh, Elizabethtown College uh, tells you. So yeah, well, yeah, absolutely. So that was actually, that was going to be one of my questions for you. So, <laughs> you know, um, E-Town, you're right. E-Town's motto is educate for service. And we take, we take what we learn and we use it to benefit others. In fact, it's, there's, there's a, there's some words that are, that are beautifully painted on a wall in the campus center that says learning is most noble when used to benefit others. And I'm, I'm just curious how, like, was that something that you were aware of when you were a student at E-Town? Like the, the, you know, um, the motto was something that, I mean, did it attract you to E-Town? Did it kind of stick with you during your years at E-Town? I didn't know much about the motto until I was a freshman. And sure. the college does a fantastic job at, um, pairing you with a lot of people that are similar to you. And when I had, um, I don't even know what they were honestly called, but there, there were students that we uh, got to know that were there for a couple of years and they, they, they were responsible for like 15 or 16 people. Peer mentor. Had, yes, yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And then you had your first year seminar right? and you got to know that was, 
the college's way of you getting to know other people on campus. So mm -hmm. that was when it was really uh, introduced to me per se. And mm -hmm. ever since then, freshman year, it, it stuck with me with regardless of whatever I do in life. Yeah, that's awesome. That's so cool. And you know what? You're not alone. I mean, that's one of the one of the many things I love about what I do at E Town, how I serve E Town now, is that I get to to meet so many alums and I get to hear their stories. And and your story is not dissimilar. You know, it's something that that is really pervasive throughout the alumni association is that it sticks with people and it it's kind of something that that informs and it influences them in their lives and. I love that. I think it's something that we, as uh, those who are connected to E-Town can be really, can be really proud of in a, in a really proud of it, and, but humbled by it as well. I mean, it's a responsibility, you know, to take what Absolutely. you learn and use it to, to benefit others. So, you know, I think humility comes into it as well. So, um, but that's, that's really cool. I'm so happy to kind of know how that continues to live on in your life. That's awesome. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's great. And like I said, you know, with, with my job at, at Tower Health and everything, you know, I, I'm not there for, for accounting per se, I'm there for IT, but you still take what you've learned and what my professors, uh, what they taught me and apply that to my life and apply that to my job, hopefully on an everyday basis. 100%. In fact, those are a lot of, there are a lot of those conversations happening on campus right now when, when you're talking about your major doesn't dictate your career. Your major and your education at E-Town influences how you, how you perform in a career. And, and um, it helps to, helps to inform, you know, your day-to-day your -day life, you know. And, and so I, I think this is a perfect example. You know, you, you went and you majored in, in accounting and you were very successful in it. But yet, you know, you, you found your way into a profession that I'm sure your accounting knowledge and that know-how helps you. Even though you might not be doing, you know, um, you might not have accountant in your in your job yeah. title. <laughs> I guess I should say. <laughs> yeah, problem solving is is one yes. of the big things for me. Um, and I took forensic accounting actually at at Elizabethtown College, mm -hmm. and I loved that course. It was actually the first year that that you guys uh, had it, and um, it, it just just problem solving in general. Like you know, I I get a ticket that I got to work you know, during my job in IT and I got to figure out, okay, I, I, I know what it needs to become. How do I get there? How do I go from A to Z? And it's putting those uh, pieces together. Sure. Yeah. That makes good sense. Yeah. And, and I'm sure that you, I mean, I, I remember you as a student and, and for, for everybody who's watching, I served as, and I still serve as the advisor to Vocal Line, which is the mm -hmm. co-ed acapella singing group on campus at E-Town. And um, yeah, yeah, right there, yeah. Derek. Yes, represent. And Derek was a member of Vocaline and a very active member. And um, together, as his as his era of Vocaline, I should say, which was kind of right at the very very beginning of that of that group's um, existence and and in the world, <laughs> but at E Town, um, Derek was integral in helping the group record its very first album, Half Past Two. How you like that? That's awesome. I haven't, I haven't seen that, that cover for, for quite a while. That's, that's fantastic. Pretty good stuff, right? <laughs> well, you know, and, and as the advisor, I have to say, I was so proud to be connected with this album, you know, just to kind of from a support capacity. And, and I think I helped with some photography or something like that you know, at one point, but, but, um, but you know the, the songs um, and and the recording that was a huge huge step for vocal line, and uh, and you played an integral part in that. There was so much of that album that that um, you took it upon yourself to learn about recording and produce you know the production of it, even into pressing the CDs and the cover art. You know, like you kind of had your your hands in helping to lead a whole lot of elements of that CD. What are some of your fondest memories of Half Past Two? Oh my, um, it, it, it was great. And first of all, frustration was the first thing that came to my mind because we had a timeline and everything. But at the end of the day, when we recorded uh, Sopranos one, one evening or yeah. altos and then tenors and then basses, when you started to see all of that come together 
and mash together, you, you saw, wow, like, look at what we accomplished. Not, not just specifically as me, as someone who um, recorded it for, for everyone, but just the group in general. Recording in front of one mic, your own part, compared to all standing around uh, a mic is totally different. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's apples to oranges. And learning, that, that's kind of how I started to learn how to mix and, and master and, and do this whole recording thing. That was my first go round because I had no experience with that. And I will give kudos out to um, a person that wasn't a vocal line for a little bit that was in Phalanx, uh, Joseph Cooper. He was oh, the one that Cooper, taught yes. Me. He was the one that kind of taught me um, just the basics and said, have at it, here you go. So we're thankful that we are able to use Phalanx's um, microphone and, and software to record that album. And it never would have gotten accomplished if it wouldn't have been for those guys. Oh my gosh, yeah. Big shout out to Coop. Um, I hope you're watching. Um, you know, we, uh, yeah, lots of, lots of respect for, for your skills, my friend. Um, but yeah, and, and, you know, for those of you who aren't, who aren't familiar, um, Phalanx is the all-male a cappella singing group at E-Town. And Melica is the all-female a cappella singing group. And of course, Vocal Line is the co-ed group. And um, really, it, it's such a fun group to be part of and, and to still be part of as an advisor. And you as an alum, I, I'm just so happy and impressed and proud of how you continue to support that group and how you have continued to support that group since graduation. You have come back to, to shows. You have been a photographer. You've helped them when they've needed assistance with arranging songs and all kinds of things. So um, just really, really happy and proud of, of the support that you continue to give that group. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. I mean, unfortunately with, with COVID and everything this year, things have been a little different and last year, but um, I, I always try to get in contact with you or, or whoever the uh, president of the group is every year to say, Hey, if you ever need anything, you know, I, I might be available to, to arrange a song for you, whether it's a senior song or, or, or something else. So I'm very thankful to still be, be a part of whatever way possible for the group. Yeah. Well, it makes a huge difference. And on behalf of the group, I just want to express sincere gratitude to you so to help. but while we're talking about vocal line you know one of my favorite songs of yours from the half past two album is a song called the weight and you you had a hand in writing that song could you give us a little bit of backstory on the weight sure so uh in my spare time back then i i helped a a local uh, rock band called Shame, mm -hmm. and they actually performed in the Cav. I, is it still called the Cav? Well, oh, the Cave, yeah. The cave. Coons the cave. Activity <laughs> Venue, yep, the Cave. The, ca the Cave, <laughs> yep. and uh, K-A-V, right? Mm -hmm. K-A-V, okay. Yep, you're um, right. In, in, the, in the Cave, and uh, I guess Sweet at the time brought them in, yeah. and uh, they played there one evening and stuff, and I used to take trips uh, to their studio at the time in, in Reading while I was a, still a student at Elizabethtown College. And they were in the process of writing a new song. And, and two of the members, uh, Peter Eric, which I still do a lot for and help out um, on a weekly basis. Uh, Very talented now. guy. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, you can find his stuff at PeterEric.com. Yes, the way. absolutely. <laughs> Um, Check it so out, him, everybody. So him and uh, Keith Knowles, who is the bass player in Shame, yeah. and I, uh, we were working on a song. And since I was there, Pete said, "Come on over. Let's let's see if you have any ideas for this song." And this song pretty much was was about just running away, forgetting your yesterdays, putting that aside, focusing on the future, focusing mm -hmm. on what's in front of you now. Um, because with everything out in this world nowadays, especially nowadays, um, mm -hmm. you, you gotta make time for yourself and you gotta put yourself first once in a while. Um, so, so pretty much that song is about, you know, the sun beating, beating down on you, driving away in a car, throwing away your yesterdays, looking forward to the future and tomorrow. Mm -hmm. But, um, we, we came up with this song. And we were starting the process of thinking about recording our Half Past Two album with Vocal Line yeah, at the yeah. time. And I brought up the idea of, hey, what do you guys think about like kind of like an original indie song that like 
no one will know no one will know about this song at all so it kind of will be brand brand spanking new for that aspect so they said yeah they agreed to it and gosh within six to eight hours i had an arrangement done wow and i i brought it to the group our next rehearsal and said hey how about this and um they said yeah let's let's try it out and people loved it the audience loved it they thought it was really unique and it had a really driving factor and a little pop to it as well. Yeah. But at the same time, we, we made it our own. It was not like Shane's version that was just a, a heavy rocker kind of song. Yeah. Ours is more of a pop song, but it still had that Shane vibe to it as well, any vibe to it as well. So yeah. I'm thankful that it turned out fantastic for the album. And we went on to, to singing it for the rest of my tenure in uh, Vocaline. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's it's a phenomenal song. W would you play it for us? Sure. Fantastic. Version, so I did a version off of my album called uh, Sunrise and Sunset album. Uh, so I arranged it again. So that for, I arranged it the second time from the acapella version. So it doesn't have any specific lyrics to it. But what I will do here is I want to talk about or I just want to uh, just say the lyrics real quick. Yeah, um, sure. Absolutely. Figure out the melody a little bit. So it's, I remember life when I could open my eyes without missing. The space between the lines was such a surprise right beside me. And the other verse is, there's no looking back when so much time has passed, but now I can barely remember. All the small details have so much to reveal if I would only listen. And then pretty much the chorus is, if running away could take me to that place for a day, the radio on, like radio in the car, windows down as that sun paints my face. And today I throw away yesterday. Throw away yesterday. I remember the chorus well. So wonderful. Yeah, I'll please play. play. <laughs>
All right, Derek. I forgot how low that was. <laughs> I, I'm playing it on a regular piano, so yeah. I'm not good at transposing. So when I play that, and actually I have not played that song in probably two years. Oh, wow. But, um, that is a song that my father-in-law wrote, and it kind of became their theme song. Uh, he works at their family business titled Lancaster County Marine. It's oh. based out of Akron. Uh, mm -hmm. in Lancaster County. So if you're looking for a kayak, go check him out. <laughs> nice. Great plug. Yeah. I was going to say that, that, um, that, that was in, that was in my notes too, that, that, you know, that, that piece and, uh, and some, some of your other works have actually been made into orchestral arrangements. Is that correct? Yes. So as Night Water Project evolved over the years, after I graduated from Elizabethtown College, I thought, let's, let's, I, I'd like to, I always try to do better than what I've done in the past um, and try to um, just make myself better as a musician and just try and put goals out there just, just to see if I can reach them. Um, and one of those was, let's, let's, let's evolve a little bit here and let's actually try to do some orchestral pieces mm -hmm. and not just a, a piano or synth or something like that. So on my actual album, which you can actually find on Amazon for a physical copy or download pretty much on digital distribution websites, but this album, New Horizons, uh, at the bottom it says featuring the PA symphony. And so what I did was I, I branched Night Water Project out into a couple um, subcategories. And one of those subcategories is the PA, uh, PA Symphony. And what that is, is any time I actually do an orchestral piece, I use them as my slogan name um, as a subcategory of Night Water Project. Just for me, so I can tell the difference, but also for the people who are fans of my music, uh, and, and, and just so they can find me a different way on like Apple music and iTunes, CD baby and so forth. So what I did was my father-in-law actually was at the piano one evening and said, I'm coming up with a song. So he came up with a melody and, and the lyrics and he pretty much handed it off to me and said, here you go, Derek, take it away. See what do you something do. with it. Right. <laughs> so, so the version I played just for you, obviously it was all piano, yeah. but the version that I have that was recorded in my little studio, I have a MIDI keyboard. So, and I have plugins. So everything you hear on there, there's, there's, there's French horns, there's, mm. there's trumpet, there's tuba, there's violins, there's violas yeah. and, and so forth. That's all me on piano, but it transposes it to sound like those instruments because they're mm -hmm. pre-recorded instruments plugged into a plugin that I use through my tool, uh, pro tool software. So go check out, go check out that song. And you might be like, wow, sounds like an actual orchestra playing it, but it's actually, it's actually not. How about that? Yeah. It's the magic of technology, yeah. right? Everybody Absolutely. out there who's watching this, they know Derek's secret now. So, <laughs> I yeah. don't tell many people that. No. No, no, it's cool. So, you know, you mentioned, you mentioned something that we haven't quite covered yet. So, um, so Nightwater Project is the name of, of a, a musical project that started after E-Town. Is that correct? So, so some of the songs like Reborn that we talked about before, yeah, I, I actually released under my name and I created like a mini album that you probably could still find actually on digital distribution apps. But I, I thought, I need some sort of a, I don't want to just be called Derek Shanley. Mm -hmm. I want to be called something that um, people could find me in unique ways. And I'm I just not a person where I, I like to be like center of attention. I'm just not that type of person. Mm -hmm. um, and I never was. So I wanted to get away from that and say, let's, let's come up with a name. So I came up with Night Water Project and I, I have project at the end of it thinking, I'm going to release, you know, one album and, you know, I'm done, you know, yeah. I'm going to, I'm still going to do things on the side, but I'm not going to keep going with that. And here we are, you know, you have 12 albums later and 70 some, 70 some songs, mm -hmm. uh, after this 15 years. So 
12 it's my albums. Second job. <laughs> yeah, 12 <laughs> albums is amazing. Amazing. And it's nightwaterproject.com. Is that correct? correct? Yeah. Yeah. So everybody's watching. If um, if you're interested in checking it out, go to nightwaterproject.com. 12 albums of music. That's amazing. 12 and albums. There's about four that are original music, and then pretty much everything else um, are, are cover albums and stuff. So, mm -hmm. you know, if, 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 if you like my stuff, great. You know, if, if you like pop music or classical music or anything like that, there's probably something for, for everyone out there. Yeah. Well, and that's, that's something that I've noticed throughout the years with Nightwater Project is that it's not just one type of music, which I think is really cool. You, you kind of, I mean, it really does, it really is a project, you know, it's, it's whatever project you choose to take yeah. on at that point, you know, and right. whether it's classical, whether it's holiday music, you name it. Yep. And it's something that could very well be a project of Nightwater Project. Right. Yeah, <laughs> which is exactly, cool. exactly. Yep. <laughs> yeah. No, that's awesome. So, so Nightwater Project is kind of an evolving thing, right? And it's something that, that you said, it's almost like a second job for you, you know, and you do, you post all of these video updates on your Facebook page and all those kinds of things. I mean, you're very, very active. So, um, and, and you actually had some of your music featured at Hershey Park, is that correct? I did. So, <laughs> so going back to Vocal Line a little bit, um, mm -hmm. that's how that project actually started. So we actually Vocal Line. When I was a member, we actually sang for the Hershey Bears. And we sang the national anthem, and mm -hmm. actually, you can find that on YouTube as well if you yes. want to check it out. I was but, at um, that game. You were. That's right. Yes. You were. But it was a fantastic experience. Um, and and. A lot of things in this world, you know, are, are, are connections, you know, mm -hmm. and, and, and that's something that has stuck with me forever is if you don't know connections, just reach out to people. You know, you mm -hmm. have the World Wide Web these days and look in your backyard, look at, look at businesses in your backyard and if, see if they're even interested. But if you never try, it'll, nothing will ever happen. So probably about 10% of, of the, the, the things actually evolved that, that, mm -hmm. that I've reached out to, but of those 10%, if I never would have tried, it would be 0%. So, mm -hmm. but back to, um, back to Hershey park. So the contact I had at the time for the, the vocal line gig there for the national anthem, mm -hmm. I stayed in contact with over the years. And I said, Hey, is Hershey park, do they ever do anything for, for holiday music or Christmas music? And the person got me in contact with someone that was under that entertainment side of the house. And we talked back and forth and I sent some holiday, some holiday music and it was just all piano instrumental holiday music at the time. And it's been in their repertoire ever since. Um, I haven't heard it for a year or so now, but their repertoire for holiday music is, is so thick these days. Yeah. But um, yeah. So if you go to um, Christmas candy lane ever at Hershey park, you just might hear a, a, a piano instrumental of a uh, night order project there. How about that? That's so cool. That's so cool. And you're right. I mean, you, you, uh, you stand to lose nothing by reaching out, you know? Um, so it's, it's very, very cool. And it's a good lesson for everyone. So that's awesome. So what is next for night water project? What are you working on right now? What am I not working on? <laughs> I have, what is so nice about like a, what, what we did was we have in my house, we have like a little mini studio of one of our bedrooms and I transformed that into a studio. So there's, there are times throughout the day, especially in the evening where I'm, I'm, I'm sitting just watching TV with my wife or whatever. And an idea just pops in my mind. And there have been times where I said to her, I'll be back. So, and I, and I, and I go up to the studio uh, in the past and I just had to just lay something down just so that it stuck with me. So probably, like I said, I have 70 plus songs that I've released on that specific computer and pro tools. I probably have over 150 songs that are out yeah. there that are total. So probably out of those 70, um, I have probably about 60, 60, 60, 70 that are just sitting out there of just ideas that yeah. are still evolving over time. Yeah. Well, you know, and, and it's, it's so interesting that you say that because I've, I've heard a lot of writers say the exact same thing. They keep a notebook 
beside their bed in the evening because if they're they might wake up with an inspiration they might have had a dream that they don't want to forget and and oftentimes that turns into a work of some kind whether it's poetry whether it's a short story whether it could be a novel you know and and uh and you as a musician it kind of sounds like you kind of have those those sparks of inspiration too and and you have to capitalize on them when they when they appear right yep and and I'm, I'm not a huge fan of Steven Tyler, but I will say he wrote the song Dream On in 20 minutes Wow! on his organ I didn't know at that. his house. So that's kind of how I am. Like, like when I get an idea, I, I jot it down or I play it. And, yeah. and a lot of these songs now, Reborn in the beginning, that took a little while. Yeah. But there's been some songs where if it's just a melody and, and, and a quick harmony, there's been songs that I've gotten done within half an hour. Wow. Now they're not fully recorded, obviously, but the whole song is done. And then you spend the hours and hours in your studio recording it and mastering it. And so forth. sure. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. That's great. Well, how about you treat us to a little bit more of your music? Sure. So what I have next, um, and Mark, do you want to do all three or do you want to do one at a time from here? Or how would you like to do this? Hey, it's up to you. How, however okay. you feel the flow we'll works the, best. We'll do, the, we'll do the next two. And okay. then I'll talk a little bit before I perform my the last one. That but sounds the, great. The next, so so going back, the, the last set was The Wait, obviously. Mm -hmm. The next song was A Kiss Right Now. That song I recorded, um, I, I got the ideas for while I was at Elizabethtown College. Mm -hmm. yeah. And there were people that I knew that were older than me that were serving our country. And I wanted to do a love song um, specifically for a handful of people that were serving our country at the time and write a love song. So when they came back to their loved ones, uh, I, they could uh, reminisce to that. So that's what that is about. And then forever in my heart is a Valentine's day song. I would, I'm a huge Jim Brickman fan. I don't know if you ever heard of Jim Brickman. He's a piano player, mm -hmm. has written fantastic music over the years. And I wanted to do, do to do a love song. And that was uh, forever in my heart. And then the last song, obviously, was Nothing Better, which is about boats and all that stuff. So right. the, the next song I want to do specifically is a song that Peter Eric and Shame mm -hmm. wrote, but they never released it. And I was always a huge fan of this song. I heard it one time live um, in concert. Mm -hmm. And I always said to him, you got to do this piece. You got to record this and stuff. And they never did. So I pretty much said, I'm going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I did my own version of it with my PA symphony, um, which is an orchestral piece. And it's, Again, I have not played this song on piano for about three years. So well, I hope I hope great. I don't mess it up. But um, if you listen to the melody and stuff, just just imagine, just imagine, um, just a, a symphony and an orchestra playing along with with violins. So here we go. Fantastic.
And that was for a, a pretty special uh, person in your life, right? Yeah, that was for my son. So I so, figured well, that was for Lucas. Yes. So, <laughs> so I wanted to do something special for, for our son. And at the time when I wrote this, I did not know we were having a son. So he was born and we found out, oh, it was a boy. So I wrote five versions of that song and two were more pop versions, two were um, more piano versions, and then an instrumental. So I had five versions, uh, two versions for the boy, two versions for a girl, and then the instrumental version. So I released an, a whole album specifically for that. So that's out there on iTunes and Spotify and, and so forth too. So I wanted to do something a little unique because everyone kind of does a reveal to say, hey, you know, we have a new member of the family and so forth. And being a musician, I wanted to share that news in a unique and different way. Very cool. It's a yeah. neat idea. Very neat idea. So that's awesome. This has been really, really great. I've really enjoyed just kind of going through your story and, and you know, kind of walking alongside you throughout all of these different steps in your life so far. And it's so exciting to hear about what you've got going on now and, and, you know, kind of, you know, in, into the future too. So uh, just congratulations to you on everything. This is really great. Thank you. And, and like you said before about where, where I'm looking at going and everything, um, yeah. hopefully someday, you know, someone will reach out to me and say, I really like that song. I'm a producer for so-and-so artists. I, and that, I, we dig this song and we we'd like to uh make it our own so that's mm -hmm. that's my dream uh just just like pretty much every other singer songwriter out there that that but i'm again i'm more of a studio musician i don't i don't really perform so you're you're this is a unique experience uh, this is a step outside right <laughs> exactly but um you know i have my songs played at hershey park um yeah. strasburg railroad uses it for the christmas time as well yeah. and as well as multiple um, businesses. So they're pretty much everywhere that uses them. Um, I have I have a page on my nightorderproject.com page that mm -hmm. showcases where um, what businesses are or have used my, my music. And another thing, I, I am very close, and I cannot announce it yet, but I'm very close to having a, a fitness um, business that is nationwide. Um, have using my music so no. about a couple of weeks you heard ago, it here first <laughs> <laughs> a couple I, I wish i could but until it's yeah, official yeah. i can't say anything but um I, I again i reached out to them and they said oh we never we never thought about an indie musician before we usually yeah. get it from a vault and then we you know get the royalties for that and so forth right and i sent them samples and they said this is we like this so send us send us your best 15 to 20 songs that you have originals mm -hmm. and and i did and and that's in the process right now so very cool crossing my fingers that hopefully it'll turn out well and um i'll be you know hopefully stating that announcement hopefully in the next couple weeks that's great well you make sure that you let us know at e-town because that's the kind of stuff that we want to we want to help get out to our alumni family because uh we're we're blue jays and and we, we look out for each other and we yep. celebrate each other. So yep. um, do that. I, I can't wait to hear that. I, I hope it works out. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. So what's your what's your final tune? You've got a special way of kind of concluding the musical <laughs> portion of tonight. What, what are you well, going to do next? Well, everyone's going to find out. And if you know it, sing along. All right. That sounds great.
Yes, absolutely. That's a perfect way to conclude this evening. <laughs> Thank you so much, Derek. Sure, no problem at all. Fantastic. Yes. And to all of our audience, thank you so much for being here this evening. We have more programming, alumni programming coming up in our virtual realm. We have a uh, Meet the Professors video that's going to drop later this month with Dr. Lynn Eckroat. She is the director of our new physician assistant program. And so um, there's going to be a whole lot of cool stuff that we're going to learn in that. And then we're going to feature an alum, Nico Antonellos, um, he's class of 2013. He's gonna be with us in early May. So keep your eyes open, go to etownalumni.com for more information on those things. We would love to see you back here. And if you happen to miss it, we are gonna record it. So you can watch it anytime you want, just like tonight. So, um, but again, Derek, thank you so much for sharing your gifts, your story your insights um, just for being with us uh, for this evening. This has been a real treat. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. And to our greater E-Town family, um, I am Mark Clapper. And remember that we are Blue Jays always. Hope you have a great evening. <laughs>